Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in Spirit of the North. Now this was developed by Infuse Studio, published by Merge Games and is usually available for £19.99 slash $24.99 but has now been finally included with Xbox Game Pass so hoorah. So we play as a fox and for the guide's sake we will call him Mr. Foxhard. Nice normal name, nothing bad or dirty about that or anything. Anyway, we start normal, traversing the beautiful Icelandic mountains until we start gaining magical powers through a spirit fox. Then we save the day, as is the norm. Now, as for achievements and trophies, we a lot we would basically get for simply going through the story, gaining the powers um, and a lot of other stuff going on throughout the game. But the only sort of kind of missable ones or the miscellaneous ones at least we have to be looking out for is the 28 Shaman or in American English it's Shaman Sticks but I'm going to go with Shaman Sticks to give to the already deceased so this spirit may flow through the cold once more then in chapter 7 we have to basically greet all 28 of them other than that it's a great game, superbly enjoyable and it should take between 2-3 to three hours to get this done so with that being said then let's do it So, as you can tell, there is no dialogue in the game, the cutscenes are unskippable, but now we can go. So, for the first chapter then, it's cold, it's chilly, it's, uh, <laughs> well, it it makes parts of your bodies go in in themselves. But, uh, yeah, so what we're doing for now then is walking forward, we can't um, jog or anything, we can't sprint or anything like that yet, so just continue onwards, just towards the top of the rock here. And this is actually a real beautiful scene, and we'll get a few of these throughout the game. And then what we're actually going to do now is come up to our first achievement, and it's basically for standing still for three minutes. Now, of course, you can get this in... Uh, at any point in the game literally, but we're just gonna go ahead and do it right now. So Literally set your controller down for three minutes, you know have a quick three minute sleep have a you know Maybe just go make some toast Beans on toast, which I know all uh, all Americans just are just disgusted with us Brits for the beans on toast malarkey But you know you do you just make sure you're not moving the controller for three minutes Now, if you're wondering why the video didn't take three minutes to get the achievement, as soon as he starts lying down in the snow, trying to suffocate himself with snow, I wouldn't do that personally. Uh, of course, I edited it down slightly, so, you know, we don't need to be waiting the whole three minutes, as it were. Right, so again, just continue on forward. For some reason, I found jumping helps you go a tiny little bit quicker, I think. Which helps in any case. Anyway, again, just continue forward. There's nowhere else to go, nowhere else to turn, nothing else to do for a minute. Except get out of the cold! Right, 
Right, so now we're going to come up to another achievement. So if you turn left, we're going to go into like this little cave. Brr, get your buns out of the cold. And then what you're going to see directly in front of us is the first shaman stick. Shaman stick. So we're going to press the B button here to pick it up. And then once again, now again, you could do this with any shaman stick. There are 28 throughout the game to collect. But again, I'm just getting them out early. But what we need to do with a shaman stick in our mouth is just stand still for yet another three minutes. So, you know, go ahead and do all the things I said. Make beans on toast again, if you want. Just make biscuits and gravy. The, the American biscuits and gravy, which is supposed to be really nice. Not uh, OXO cubes and, you know, digestive biscuits. Not the British way, no. No, 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 no. Anyway, again, I will have edited it down some anyway. We'll talk more about the American versus British food bashing later on, probably. So there you go. As soon as you've stood still for three minutes carrying a shaman staff, you will get that achievement. So go back out through the ice cave. You're going to see the first deceased body. There it is, just slumping up against. He does look a bit cold, so we'll warm him up. Drop it, drop it again with B, of course, and then... Hallelujah! His spirit will rise once again. And then he'll open up the way for us. So that's the first out of 28 Shaman Sticks done. So for now, again, we will just continue. And you can always tell, as you can see, as soon as you collect one there, you will... Um, it'll come up there on the right-hand side of the screen. So again, just continue on forward for now. The first two chapters are a little bit linear. And then from chapter three onwards, it gets a bit error. So here's our apparently new buddy, who is, of course, deader than a dead thing. Press the B button to wake him up. And he's going to help us by giving us a power. So he's like, oh, cheers, mate. I haven't seen an alive fox for a while. But it's a basic case of we got to follow him. And what he's doing right now, we can't do. So don't even try. So in that case for us, we're going to have to go right. Yeah, yes. We will, of course, be able to play as a spirit later on, but there we go. We'll get the next achievement there, a guardian forgotten for awakening the northern spirit. Awakening northern spirit. That's, uh, yeah, that's what all northern English people sound like. No, no, I've, I've lost it. Sorry. Sorry to offend all the northern English with my extremely pathetic accent right there. Uh, right, so to continue onwards, you can swim. Um, although it does take a little bit longer. So again, all, all we're doing for now is basically just following the linear path through. And by following the linear path through, what I meant was when we get here, we're going to take a right up this little snowy embankment. And we are going to continue upwards. Now, again, there is actually nowhere else to go from here. So just continue on upwards until we find the Spirit of the North right at the very top. Now, sometimes the jumping mechanics can be a little bit finicky in the game, as well as actually controlling the fox. In terms of if you go to jump one way, he, will, he may jump another way. So sometimes it can get slightly annoying with that, but that's about it. So now we can actually jump down. And again, incredibly, not break any legs because the Icelandic snow is such... Softness and beautifulness that you can never break your ankles. And now we can follow the linear path. So, uh, what you're supposed to do is actually wait, but nah, screw it. Uh, when we get here, where this sort of waterfall is, that's where the, the spirit will go to. And then we'll go to the left, as we can see, just through this little cave. And he will grant us the ability, for some reason, just because he hasn't seen an alive fox in a while, the ability to jog slightly more. So, left bumper to jog, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a jog well done. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so, yep, just continue onwards again. You're going to do some slipping and sliding. Ooh! <laughs> mm. 
So once we get to this point, we are going to take a right up another bit of a snowy embankment to find the second shaman stick, the second shaman stick. So there we go, head up to the right, all the way up, and we will find it here. There it is. Ah, nice. So again, somehow, because these shaman sticks are very magical, they can just sometimes clip through walls, which is always nice. Makes it easier for us. So from here, what we're going to do is take the far left. So if you uh, take a little look behind you, there's two openings. The one we came down, and just to the right of it is another opening. So we're going to go up there, and this is where we're going to find the second deceased. And turn around and just jump off doing the Assassin's Creed style. But of course, this uh, beautiful Icelandic snow is probably softer than a cart full of hay, as we would already imagine. So that should be 2 out of 28. Now you can press the B button to bark, and away we go again. So, more slidey, slidey stuff. So, what does the fox say? Ah! 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 So go ahead, just take a right, uh, the path splits, so we're going to take a right and continue heading downwards. I don't think it matters too much, but, you know, I think it's just the fastest way. Mr. Foxhard says, no more, no more. Right, go into this little bit of cave right here, and you're going to find the third shaman stick. So, again, you think, how do we get out of here? But again, it's magic. It clips through walls. But it doesn't clip through this bit, no. So, uh, the deceased is just on the other side of where we are now. Here he is. So that should be number three out of 28. <laughs>
And there we are then, Mr. Foxhard is now dead, so that's about it. There we go, game over. I do nothing else in this game. Uh, no, apparently we get saved a million times because this spirit, I mean, he's not exactly alive himself, is he? So we might as well help us out. But on to chapter two anyway. Now, again, this is a, a bit of a slow burner. We've basically got, we're basically Mr. Hopalong rather than Mr. Foxhard right now. Um, so literally... All you're doing for the next however many minutes is following the spirit and doing it very slowly. I mean, you can still jump on three legs, can't you? It's like it's like us humans. If we broke one leg, we can just hop on the other. Easy. I don't know what you complain about. But when we get here, what we're going to do is take a right rather than a left. And there's going to be another little cave that we can slowly hobble along in to grab the next shaman stick. And then you'll just turn around and follow the spirit once again.
this is where the deceased is then, right next to this mural, where it's like a big mountain and a lot of people covering the ears. Uh, oh my god, not mountains! No! And then continue onwards again, following the spirit. There's going to be another shaman stick just in front of us, um, which we are going to grab. And then El Deadski Broski is going to be on the left, chilling. I mean, extremely chilling, but he's going to be happy that we help him out. So, there we go. Press that one, press the B button, get it down, and continue following the fox. It does get more puzzly, and it gets a bit faster. Coming up in Chapter 3, I swear down. So there we go then, so we've collapsed for the second time, and we get another power and we're alive again. Job done. Plus we can run properly this time. So, you should have got the Awaken achievement there for uh, uh, Awakening 5 Shaman Spirits. You'll also get the achievement, again, story related here, infused with light, basically for completing Chapter 2. Right, so, um, again I'll explain a bit more with uh, what the light does in just a bit, but basically with your head... Head around, it's basically heading around and out, is what's happening. So there we go, find the path which we have found, and then exit on your merry little way. And so what this light does then, you're going to see like these big stones, slabs of stones. 
when you press the Y button, you will uh, obviously light it up. As long as you've got light in your body, you'll press the Y button next to these stones. It will light up and it will normally uh, show you the way. And you can get, well, you can get out of almost any situation. Almost any situation. I mean, if you get caught, like, fox snapping or cheating with another fox or maybe fox murder, you can't sort of get out of that with a bit of light. But uh, anyway, continue onwards. Chapter 3, here we go. This is where the game truly starts now. Uh, now, if you haven't figured it out already, press the A button or the right bumper to jumper. Oh, and here's our light as well. So, also, what you can be doing throughout the game, you should probably, you, you'll pretty much be able to get it with uh, normal progression anyway. But if you keep pressing the B button, every time you bark, your little friend chirps up a little bit as well. You basically have to do that a hundred times. So I just keep on barking until the achievement unlocks. So, yeah, but again, you may pr more or less get it with uh, through natural story progression anyway. So for now, it's just a bit of platforming here, what we're going to do. Um, now, if you end up falling, there is always usually a way to get back up, of course. So do not worry about that. Um, but we are just jumping forward for the time being and around. Now, this is going to be a key feature throughout the rest of the game. You're going to see these flowers. You'll back it up. Your little wispy friend will open it up. Now, what you have to do is make sure that you have light on your body. And then go over to this stone here. Press the white button and that will open it up. So, again, what you need to do, though, is open up the flowers, again, by barking, and then just have a little walk in it until your body is lit up. So, some, because basically, sometimes, and it took me, like, a minute to figure it out, but even if you just open the flowers, sometimes you won't get the light infused in your body. So, just have a little walk around until your body is lit up there. So, onwards we go, and what we're going to do here is take a uh, right, no, left, Puh, sorry, we're going to take a left. And then when we get down here, we're going to take a left again. Yeah, in order to get the next light. So again, once it opens up, just make sure you are covered in light. And then continue onwards. Sorry about the little bit of confusion there as well. So we are now going to head left. Straight down. And you can see this big slabby stone that we're going to press the Y button to get that whoop. Popping, jumping, skipping, and flipping, dog. So again, continue going forwards. Of course, these stones are somehow connected with things to help us get on our way. So here's another set of flowers. It's going to be a little bit of an edit, but we're basically still in the same spot. So once you have got light infused in your body, continue onwards. And you can see where we are going to start climbing and doing some platformy floormies. So take, uh, if you go straight in front of us, though, there is the next shaman stick we're going to grab. So make sure to pick this one up. And then if we turn around, we can then just continue on again. This is only a small linear platformy path and the deceased will be on the other side. Right then, so we've dropped down, we'll head a left, take a left into this little bit of water. Again, you should still be infused with light. Um, and the stone slab is there on the left, so that should be six now, of course, shaman sticks that you should be on. And once this is lit up, then we're going to get some water rising. So now we can go sort of back on ourselves, so back the way we came, slowly swim to the left, and then wash yourself dry. <laughs> yeah, nice. That probably gets annoying after a while, isn't it? Uh, continue on upwards anyway, and then up, and up, and up. And ooh, what do we have here? More flowers. Now, you will get two um, unmissable achievements for basically getting 25 and then 50 of these blooms. <laughs> So, again, you, you will get those a little bit later on. So, go straight forward, grab the next shaman stick. And then from here, we'll take a right. Jump across. 
And we can press the Y button here on the next slab stone. So we need to go for a swim to the left hand side, not this one, but the um, ramp on the left. So just after following that path, we're going to turn around. You're going to have to put the shaman stick down, I'm afraid. And then get some light coursing through your veins. The power. Okay, so there we go then. Pick up the shaman stick once again. Make a leap for it straight in front of us. And slab it up, boys. Slab it up. Right, so now we can, uh, if we jump, basically going to need some more light. So pop the shaman stick down here, jump up, grab some... More of the deliciousness that will be the bloomliest, lightiest of lights. Uh, now again, if you can actually get some light coursing through your veins like beer, then there we go. So make sure you litter, pick up the shaman stick once again, and then continue forward through the water. Again, if you, may, if you give yourself a big jump, you can kind of save a second or two. And you can obviously see the stone we're going to light up right here. Well, lucky foxes can swim, eh? Otherwise, we'd have drowned a long time ago, and there would be no game. Right, so jump up, and uh, obviously what we're going to do is gonna, we're going to need to get some light. Uh, so, let's go find that light. By the way, there is a deceased body coming up soon, so don't worry about that. So, drop the shaman stick here, grab the light. Now, this one was a bit finicky for me, for some reason. I, I had to jump and stand in a weird specific spot in order to get lit up like a beacon. And once you have finally been lit up, uh, go ahead, go back towards the slabby stone, press the Y button, and the deceased will be right underneath all of the water. Wow, it's lucky we know what to do, eh? Uh, as the fox. So what we do now is we can go... Uh, and light ourselves up again, sorry. So we'll go light ourselves up again. Hopefully it works a little bit better this time, there we go. Pick up the shaman stick once more, and then what you're doing from the right of this rock, we are going to just jump straight down. There he is. Man, he's looking good after being buried underwater for a while. Anyway, there is the next ceased, and that is the next collectible effectively done. Okay, so before we get filled up with water again, um, there we go, that's all good. So we can take a right through this little open cave, drop down, and we can press the Y button here. And that'll open up the way for us, which is nice. Thank you 
so much, sir. Uh, but there we go, then. So that's the top row done. That's 7 out of 28 completos of the Shaman Sticks. So, onwards and upwards, eh? Press the Y button again, and you, you should have already been uh, lit up there automatically. And, ooh, that was close. Oh, jeez, and that was as well. So, could have been crushed. Could have been over before it began. But onwards we go then. Jump out. Yeah. So we're into a completely new area now. So first things first, head to the left, go up the ramp, and we're going to get ourselves infused with light. And now what we're supposed to do is, there's a cave directly opposite us, um, which we are going to use in order to get these geysers. Geysers? Geysers? No, no, I better call it geysers, sorry. Um, in order for the geysers to work. So, we're going to go straight ahead. Again, sometimes if you do get lost, our little chirpy friend there does help us find the way. So, here's the next slab. that will get the geysers going. Flowing. Now, basically, this is what happens when women see me. <laughs> I lied. They run away scared. Eh. You win some, you lose some, huh? No, I'm just joking, of course. That was, uh, I'm a, I'm just a strong old pea head. Right, go to the right anyway. And then just through this little bit of gap here, there is some more flowers which we're going to use. So once again, of course, infuse yourself with light. Sploosh! They should have called geysers a sploosh, shouldn't they? It's a sploosh. Yeah. Anyway, head back to the, obviously, the working geysers, the one on the right we're going to go for. And pop yourself up, and there's another slab we're going to use. Okay, so now three of the splooshers are working. So we are going to go uh, to the left again, up the ramp, get ourselves infused with light once more. The rock ramp, whatever. Uh, so make sure that you get yourself infused with light again, and then we can end the sploosh section. Or the geyser section, whatever you want to call it. Um, so wait here until it splooshes, and then up we go. Jump across to the other side, and you are out of the sploosh zone. And into the friend zone. Ha <laughs> depressing. Alright, so continue on your merry little way here. And we can see the next slabstone. So before heading to the next geyser, take a left, go across these uh, gaps, which I done incredibly terribly. Uh, just to find another flower, and then you can go back and go across the geyser to the other side. So we're going to take the left, there's nothing on the right, so we are good to go. So continue onwards for the time being. And to the left, what you can see then is the next Shaman Stick. Now again, it's a little bit of a puzzle in here in order to get up, but we've got a, a couple of things to do. Now I'm actually going to be unlocking the f uh, one of the first achievements for um, infusing yourself with light basically 25 times. You'll probably get it a little bit later on as I have to do some editing of course. So anyway... Grab the shaman stick, head up these rocks. Now, sometimes they can get a bit unstable and go up and go a bit nuts. Um, now, that's not what you have to do, by the way. What you have to do is wait here until the this side goes up and then jump to the left in order to get yourself slabbed up. So let's drop down, we will infuse our light, uh, ourself with light again, which I'm 
probably didn't even need to do that with the shaman stick just there. But, eh, you know, we got to carry it with us anyway, so... Right, so, once infused with light, pick up the shaman stick again. Shimon. Say Shimon. And this is, I've just got the Blooms of Light achievement again. You will probably unlock this in just a little bit. So don't panic about that. Um, now, don't get too panicky and confused there. Um, what we need to do is actually... So what we need to do is jump up on this ramp and then continue all the way up. So not sure why I decided to go to the right. We need to go straight on and then make a big jump for it. And here we are at the top. Lovely jubbly. Right, head into this next cave. Go to the left. And the deceased shall be east. So again, I do apologize about that last puzzle there. But I got confused again for some reason, even though I'd already done it and I knew what I was doing. Apparently I wasn't. So anyway, hitting left through here, and we can see what we're going to do is jump down, sort of to the right there. And we get another little unlocked ability. That's nice. So uh, nip across the bridge anyway. And again, bit of a puzzle here to do. So we are going to jump. We're going to wait for the geyser, though, to stop. And then we can jump across. Otherwise, it'll just shoot you, and you pretty much won't be able to get there. Um, continue on left. So I I, I basically... He kept, the geyser kept spitting me off to the left-hand side, which was annoying. So jump over to this next ramp. And then we can jump up. And of course, if you do fall, you just land in the water and try again. But obviously, he swims like a granny. So, you know, quite slow. Not saying that all grannies swim slow, mind you. Um, Y button on the slab. And now we need to get to the section with the four pee hole looking things. So, jump backwards on yourself there and get the uh, get yourself a next set of light. Now, what I tried doing here, I thought I could just jump over. Because it's basically where we are on this wall now. It's to, to the right of us, that little that little peeing section. Uh, now, I thought I could just do that. But as it turns out, it's easier to just go straight and then go around. Um, you can geyser yourself up if you want. Sm smash your head into the rock. And, you know, all good. Uh, but basically, go across this mini little bridge again. Take a right. Again, you do have to be careful here, just in terms of, you know, make sure that you jump on to the rock, the, the P rock. And then you should be able to just jump straight down. And there we go. Slam that slab, boy. By the way, if you're wondering, oh my god, he makes it look so effortless. Uh, no, it's called editing. The power of editing. Um, I actually got stuck on this whole part for about 10 to 12 minutes or so, which was a real pain. So basically, uh, there's two ways you can go here. We're going to take the tiny little shortcut. Or you can go across the geyser and go up the way we did the first time. Um, or you can just go ahead, jump on the rocks and get yourself up. Although this way is a little bit more finickier. Finicia. All right, probably, um, prob might have been quicker to go the other way, perhaps. So, uh, what we need to do now is we need to get ourselves some more flowers anyway. So, again, just up here then. Go and grab yourself for more flowers. Now, of course, where we've just gotten rid of the water, there is another stone slab for us to... Bam! So, go underneath. And there it is. Right, so let's go ahead and effectively finish this section now. So what we're going to do is we will jump eventually back to the right. So I'm trying to get somewhere. 
No, we're going to have to take the long way around. Yep, yeah, take the long way around. Uh, so we're going to get ourselves, of course, infused with light once more. So there we go. So infuse yourself with light. Now, basically, all we got to do then is, again, effectively go back to the start and go to the big main button we saw earlier on. Now, I did, once again, I actually tried... Now, this is where I actually tried... Um, to take a little shortcut, and as it turned out, it didn't work. Oh, no, in fact, it did work. Or did it work? No, it didn't work. No. So, I thought... Oh, I might be able to just jump across here. Should be no problem. And as it turns out, yes, it's a problem. So, uh... <laughs> again, you might have got luckier with that than me, or you can just go back to the start, and go across the geyser, and get back to that big main button. And now we can bark like a spirit, which basically, if you hold the B button, he will give off one hell of a bark. Like this. But then we just lost our light, so, you know, uh, luckily we can get some more, thankfully. So once you have done this, this section is over, we can go ahead and grab some more light, if you so participately wishing to choosing. Oh, and there we go, we get another achievement there. Best friends, now that is for causing the wisp to chirp 100 times. Like I said, I've just been hitting the B button as we've been going along. Um, so yeah, continue on forwards. This is where we're gonna start to use this ability for the first time. So when we get close to the tether, I believe it's called a tether or a plague, plague tether, hold the B button and that'll smash it out. Go back, get another flower and hit the stone with it. So I was right. Plague tethers, they called. And for once, Mr. Foxhard isn't uh, stiff as a board at deathnings. Anyway, that's the end of that chapter. Now, look at this. This is nice and warm, isn't it? Oh, look, nice red sky there. Nice, uh, dreary and very ominous looking red sky. So, for now, let's continue onwards. Now, again, for some reason, I, I found it a little bit quicker to be running and jumping at the same time. Seemed to be going a little bit quicker anyway. So begin the long, arduous task of climbing up these stairs. Ah, oh, it wasn't that long or arduous, was it? Uh, so press the B button here, of course, in order to get the flowers blooming, blossoming, and making you shine bright like a diamond. Go up to this next building here. And we're going to use the Spirit Bark ability in order to get rid of one of the next plague tethers. And as job done, San. Uh, so just head back a little bit and get yourself blossomed up again. Well
And now we can continue on our merry way again. We'll have a little look in this building to find another shaman staff. Another shaman. Another shaman staff. It's a, yeah, it sounds Irish, doesn't it? Uh, right, so for now, we will continue. We're basically going to head up to the left. So continuing up the left way, and there's going to be one of the deceased body there, just behind this little rock pile. So, going to the right, sort of going downhill, but if we continue straight on from where we are now, we're going to see yet another shaman's staff. Another one. There it is. Just in front of us now. There she blows, man. So, oh, apparently we're, we're really Mr. Foxing Hard, that rock there. Don't know what that was about. Find a bit of an epileptic fit or something on it. Hmm, sorry. So there's the Shaman Staff. Turn around and go up the hill. And you're going to see the next deceased right at the top of the hill. No, that's a rock. For some reason, I thought the rock was a person. No, no. That's bang tidy, Fred. Right, so, once that one is done, we're going to drop down, head to the right now, and continue on the little path. But when we get to this point, we are going to take a left. Here it is. So take a left into this little cave. Again, this one is actually quite easily missed. Uh, so continue down, 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 down. Now, don't do what I do here and use the spirit bark. Uh, press the A button to go in to the hole and then press the spirit back on the tether plague. As you can see, silly me used it a little bit too early. Um, so yeah. So I do apologize that, but if you don't have any light, go back into the cave that we were just in um, and go and grab the light and then destroy the uh, plague tether. So yeah, that's, that's my bad, my bad. I, I am stupid, I am stupid. <laughs> That looks good, mate. That looks good. Right, go to the right again. We're basically, well, we're sort of back in the same cave here. Uh, obviously, get yourself lit up like a Christmas tree. And then when we come out of this little cave, then we are going to take a left and start heading down the hill again. So obviously make sure you're lit up, obviously you should be with no problems, then we can head to the left here and continue on straight. You can see a building straight in front of us, that is our next destination. Or is it? Uh, well, yeah, effectively it is, but just going around here, press the Y button in order to get this slab stone going. And there we go, then we head into the building. 
get yourself some more light. And eventually we are going to make a plunge into the well. I say eventually, I mean right now we're going to make a plunge into the well. Uh, so, uh, just head through the little gap here. There's only one way we can go for this time being. So all we got to do is basically light up two slab stones on either side. Once on the left, one on the right, and then hit the middle one. There is a bunch of flowers there on the left as well. If needed. I say if needed. When you need it. Man, uh, Mr. Foxhard jumps like a soft hard. What a useless son of a... Anyway, so we can press the X button in order to use now our spirit form. Um, now, you don't need light because we already have light, so don't worry about that. But yes, so basically with that, you can... You're basically weightless. So you can walk on water as your spirit form. Um, you can go on ramps, which obviously doesn't move when you get on them. So here we go, like so. Now we can walk on water and just jump straight up into this gap, which is just great. But it is timed. So with a few puzzles then, as you can see, he starts disappearing. So you will need to get to your destination or whatever you're trying to get to as quickly as possible. Here we go then. So now, when we get lit up, we can press the X button to go into spirit form and we can go through anything we want because we are a spirit, of course. Press the Y button here on the slab stone in order to uh, get the way open. So get yourself lit up again, and we can finally escape the Chamber of Death. And this time we're going to head left, basically going straight now towards the Red Death Mist Sky. Right, so once we get to the top and we get to this building here, there is a shaman stick here, but we're just going to go ahead and uh, use our little spirit form. Go straight in front of us. There's going to be a, sla a stone, a slab we can use. And then with it, what we can do is obviously, if we, oh, we should already be lit up, uh, we'll use the shaman stick, go inside using the other entrance to the side here. And the deceased is right in front of us. That's another shaman collected spirit. Collected. Right, so uh, we'll just leave him do his thing. That whole spooky... <laughs> and then what we can do is effectively just continue on. You can see like a swirl in the distance. That is what we're sort of heading towards. Um, but uh, I would advise here just staying on top of the cliffs where we just were. We're obviously going to climb up anyway. But, you know, it just makes it... 
a little bit easier if you were to stay up there. So get yourself back up there if you followed my directions. Again, sorry, my directions have been a bit useless so far, haven't they? Yeah, necessary. Uh, but that this building here, is, oh, this bunch of walls, buildings, whatever you want to call it, that is what we are aiming towards. And of course, we've got a couple of things that we're going to do here. So first of all, take a left. Use your spirit form on uh, to get past these thick old branches. And again, straight in front of us, we are going to destroy this plague tether. So with that lovely piece done, it opens up the way for us. Bang, toity. So, continue on forwards. Forward the Saints go marching in. Not the Southampton Saints, of course. They are stuck in the championship. Um, not the Premier League. Oof. So here we come to a set of holes. Now we're going to ignore those holes for now and continue on straight until we hit this little bit of flower. Get yourself lit up. Sorry, another bit of an edit skip there. And then up the steps, we're going to take a right, but you're going to have to jump over. There we go. Make sure to jump yourself over. Whee! There we go. And then up. And up. And then it's job done. So this is going to just go whoosh. But of course, what we're going to do now is leave the alive fox on here and press the X button in order to get the... Uh, spirit going. We have to be quick again, so you'll need to nip, nip up the steps. Of course, we are timed. And then just use the plague tether to smash it open. <laughs> Lubbly jubbly. Right, jump down to the left. You can see the big red door, which we are going to get through eventually. Go get yourself lit up again. Rough. Rough, woof. I wonder if there's a dog with such a voice. Woof, woof. You know, one of those that gets all the female dogs and other guy dogs all like, Oh, damn. That's a hell of a voice. Uh, anyway, light up this slab stone. Sorry, it's really, really early in the morning. I really don't know what I'm talking about right now. My brain is turning to... <laughs> My brain is turning to mush, sorry. Anyway, this is going to open up the way for us. Thank you. So, get in. Get yourself lit up. Right, so, take a left. Of course, there is only sort of one way to go. Past the skull and bones, bruh. It's a hell of a way to die, though. Go up the ramp here. And then take a left into this hole. And we're going to jump up on the platforms, go to the right. Again, sometimes can be slightly finicky with the way he jumps and which way he decides to jump. Which is not a pain at all or anything. Um, and we're going to find the next shaman stick here just before the whole row of flowers. So there is the next one. So pick that one up. And then from here we will continue onwards. And we're just looking for a little bridge that we can jump onto, and this, well, this be it. Jump down onto this bridge, and then to the left of us now is going to be, as we jump over here first, now to the left of us is going to be where the deceased lays. And of course, light up the stone as well. So I'm going to get the next achievement here for collecting 50 spirit blooms, or lighting up 50 spirit blooms. Again, that's because of a few edits, so I would have got this a little bit earlier. So if you don't have it yet, don't panic, you will get it in just a bit as we continue on forwards. And this is for awakening 12 shaman spirits, which you should be on as well. So back through the sort of linear path uh, which we came. This time continue going straight ahead. Oh, come on, bro. It's barely water. Come on. Move faster, Mufasa. So, a couple of places we can go. The first, what we're going to do is go to the right side of this hole. Going up past the old skull and bones. Sorry, bro. I'm just going to nip past your arm there. Hit the stone with the B button. Now, uh, obviously, we have to find a specific pattern. So, this first pattern is going to be what looks like people lying down. And then... 
the stone on the right, it should automatically just go to the next one, light up, and that's the that puzzle done. But before just going through uh, what we came, we're going to go ahead and grab a little song song. So head back, first of all, and what we're going to do is take the first left into this next building here. With our little spirit, of course, go ahead, light up the mountain tops of life. And then apparently Mr. Foxhard here can't even just, 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 just jump, just jump, bruh, come on. Anyway, uh, <laughs> eventually we're going to go to the right, sort of in the main part of the area again, go to the right hand side one again, so we can continue heading up this little hill path thing, and then we can continue forwards and continue on into this new area. Head to the left though, make sure to uh, get yourself lit up here with a, another flower bloom. A flower bloom me. Come on, light me up, damn it. There we go. Right, then we're going straight and we're going up the hill. So again, the best thing I could do, because sometimes it can very easy, you can very easily get lost. So always just have, we'll always be checking our surroundings and what we can see in front of us. Use, press the X button to use your spirit bloom guy. Head up as quick as you can. And then we're going to take a right. We will be taking a right. So basically there's two slabs, the two puzzle slabs. There's the first one right at the top of the steps. And the next one is on the right as we get out of the stairs. Oh, get up the stairs, sorry. So, again, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm a ginger dead fox. Oh, damn it. Uh, so, jump, kitty, jump. Press the B button. You can actually press it twice before you... Uh, sometimes you, you are able to press it twice. Uh, the B button to... Uh, twice, so it obviously uh, rotates twice. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, so, sometimes you should be able to do that. But rotate it again, and it's going to turn two people lying down. And that's exactly what we need. And then right at the top of the steps, we are going to press the B button once. And that'll solve the puzzle. And there she blows, mate. There she blows. Right, so from here we can go to the right, just there, through the little gap and through the uh, previous archway, which was uh, locked for us. More deceased about to be appearing. I'm actually going to be grabbing two, I believe. So continue on forward right here. And then straight in front of us, we're going to get rid of this plague tether. And there is a shaman stick just underneath for us. Again, you'll get an unmissable achievement here. Uprooting darkness for destroying eight plague tethers. So make sure to pick up the shaman staff as well, the shaman stick, the shaman, the shaman, really whatever you want to call it. And then we will go to the left through this little hole and find uh, a light for us to light away with, of course, once again. And there we go. So once lit up, pick up the shaman staff again. And then this time we're basically going straight. We are going to use the uh, Y button on this stone. And then if we just turn back there, we're going to go up the little rock, the little rocks right here. And then we are going to go ahead and take a left. So you need to start, there's a bit, bit of climbing involved here, but it's not too bad. Uh, generally not so bad. Um, stay in fact, the next deceased person is actually just down the bottom there, so make sure to be dropping this one off. There you go, Mr. Spirit Man. You are free! Free of the bird! Right, so what we'll do from here then is continue on a merry way. Staying at the top here. And slowly but surely getting through the way now when we drop down here what you're going to do is basically go straight in front of us to continue climbing up these rocks uh, i did try uh, jumping onto the bridge and i kept failing so you can just climb straight up the rocks instead uh which is just great huh so up here anyway is the next shaman stick and then directly in front of us on the next tower 
is the next deceasedness. Is the next deader than dead. So it's literally just a case of it's not this one, but the next one. Go ahead, find the steps, climb up, drop them off. Now jump! Free fox hard jump! Ah! My ankles! Right, so, uh, once we jump down, make sure to, again, get yourself lit up, of course. Yeah. And there is three puzzles which we are going to do. So, with this first one, we're actually going to grab another shaman stick in just a minute as well. So, the first one, here, direct in front of us, make sure to put it to where the people are, look like they're having a party or something. Directly in front of us, again, we are going to, again, obviously, uh, choose the B button. And make sure this time to put it to people that are lying down. There we go. So the lying down people. And the stone on the right here as well. So we're going to press the B button. Boop. People lying down. Press the B button again. And it's as if people are dancing and having a joyous occasionally time. Then go up to the big uh, wall right here. Press the white button on it. And we should be squirted away there. So, uh, just go back down slightly in order to get yourself lit up again with another flower. Another magic flower. Wow, the magic of Krosmos. And uh, then we can, we're going to head to the left ever so slightly first. Before heading through the new way. And we're going to light up the other side as well. So get through the new entrance and take a left. And then here we're going to take a right. So just make sure to take a right. And here are some more flowers we can light ourselves up with. Dignity and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, once we are lit up then, um, let us... Let us, we're going to the right, yes, the right, through the right hole. <laughs> Better than the wrong hole, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so what we're going to do, we, uh, as the fox, we are going to stand just on here. The, obviously, the, uh, the way just lights up there, and the only way we can get there is by being weightless with the spirit form. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing now. But first of all, as the fox, we are going to just jump across quickly in order to get another shaman staff. So go to the left, and it was on the tower. So a little bit of, uh, sorry about that, but it's on the tower just in front of us there. So jump up, make sure to grab that. And then you can just go ahead and go, I think I just try, I do try jumping back. I don't think it works. Nah, anyway, if it doesn't work, just jump down and go back. Okay, so now we'll press the X button there to go weightless. We're going to actually apparently fall down. If you do end up falling down, just press the X button again to go back into weight form. Because we're going to go across the bridge this time. Quickly run up the hill. And then we are going to press Y on the stone slab before we get uh, disintegrated and disappeared. And with that, the door will open and we are on our way. Remember to grab your shaman stick too. Whoa, whoa, almost messed that one up. Right, okay, since I didn't mess that one up, uh, in here, stick with the left-hand side wall. And there's going to be a little entrance for us in just a moment. There we go. So, nip through, continue on down, and there he is on the right, Mr. Dead Guy. Right, so now we will just go straight ahead of us, and we can see the uh, more flowers. 
So let's flower it up. Etc. I don't know what noise that was supposed to be. But anyway, we're all lit up again. We will get the uh, next shaman uh, collectible done. Then we're going to head up the little bit of rock there and continue onwards. And slightly right. So also get yourself lit up. Now, if you press and hold the B button here, you can actually get rid of one of the plague tethers already, which I forget to do here, but I end up getting at the end anyway, but that's fine. Uh, so up the steps. Now, what we're going to do now is we're basically going to have to get into spirit form and get rid of some of the plague tethers. You may get an achievement called weightless here for stepping on a pressure plate, an unstable platform, and for walking on water while in spirit form. Um... <laughs> Again, you don't have to do it all at the same time. So don't worry, I thought you had to do all three at the same time, but you don't. So what we need to do, jump over, jump over again, now head left. So head left now, and then press and hold the B button. So uh, I do apologize, I forgot to edit these two little bits of mistakes out. But um, that's what you will need to do in order to get rid of the first plague tether. So again, when you get here, go left into that little gap. And then you should um, be able to do it. So again, I do apologize there. I uh, missed out on editing these two mistakes out. And apparently I just jumped straight for the older death file. Right, so it's this time then we're actually going to do it. So jump across, go left, and ta-da! There we go. So now we can actually just jump across as a live fox. So let's jump across, jump across again, and again, and uh, jump across once more. So there's basically two that we've got to do now. So there's going to be a whole bunch of flowers here. So just jump across again, make sure not to fall, otherwise you have to go back up and around. Here's the flower, and there's going to be one to the left of us now, and one to the right. So uh, what we're going to do, we're just going to get this one out of the way first. And then go ahead, go back and get that flower. Um, obviously a bit of an edit there, I was already lit up, but go and get that flower again, get yourself lit up, and then jump across to the other side, follow the path around, and here is the final one. Uh, well, I say the final one, this is the third one that we've done so far. There is one more, but it's very easy in order to get it. Um, but basically after this, we can just jump straight down into the pool. Into the pool. Not exactly a swimming, luxurious swim pool in the middle of Greece, is it? So, uh, all we're going to need to do then here is just get the flower and then what you need to do is light up all four stones. So we're going to light up the first three, we're going to go and grab that other plague tether, which I forgot to do first of all. And then it's his job as golden as done, nuggety nugs. Plus, 
quest, you should now get the written in stone achievement. Again, this is for just infusing 30 standing stones, which again, you will get either just before me or roughly about exactly now. So here we are then back at the sort of beginning part of the area. Um, so let's go ahead and infuse it again. Infuse ourselves with some light and it is just up above. So we're going to have to go back up the steps. And it's not up those steps. It is right here. So again, I do apologize that I missed this one. But once you've done this, get yourself infused with light and hit the last stone and you'll go for a nice dive. So this will be the end of chapter four. We're now coming up to chapter five. And I've got to say, I do apologize. Uh, a couple of parts, is, this isn't my uh, smoothest guide. I have made um, quite a few mistakes, which which I'm so sorry for. But, uh, you know, I'm still pointing you in the right direction, aren't I? So, you know, all's well that ends well. Right, so welcome to chapter five. Uh, now, for the time being, let's just continue on slightly forward. It's getting a bit rocky in here. Oh, wait, go back and hit the stone first. And then what we are going to see is, not through there, but there's going to be like these uh, beams of circling lights or whatever. It's just a boost. It just gives you a little boosty boost in the air. So when we get here, take a left, go to the flowers, get yourself infused with light, and then of course we are going to pop the light into the stone in order to get some boosts, get some air boosts. But just before we uh, start boosting everywhere, go and get yourself infused with light again in one of the flowers. Woof woof to you too, broski. Eventually it'll pop up. There we go. Oh, look at him. He's like fantastic Mr. Folks. Anyway, what we're going to do then, just nip past here for now. We're going to go to the opposite side here and start heading up the hill. Uh, sort of head up the middle one, as it were. Of course, we're going to be grabbing some more shaman sticks. Hey, shaman, give me your stick. And the first one is right here. Hello. Right in the pit of nothing. But we will continue heading up in order to find the deceasedness. Now, he's actually on top of this rock. Now, what I thought you could just do is go ahead and jump up onto the rock, but no, um, you can't actually do that. So, it's going to be doing a little bit of fast-forwarding just while I stop being stupid. But basically, you just need to go to the opposite side of the rock and climb up. As you can see... As you can see, it's working! So, you got to go down to the bottom of the rock and then, uh, and then climb up and then it's all good. So, just watch now. So, here we are then. That was my fast-forward voice. Was it good? No, me neither. Right, so there you go. So all you have to do is go to the bottom there, climb up, 
and then pop it down, and then that is another spirit saved. You the man, you the woman, you the everything. Right, so jump back down, head over these um, laying bricks like you're doing the like the um, what's the one with the running and you got to jump over the things. Nah, you know that Olympic sport. Uh, so heading basically all the way back into this area here with the stone slab. Now we are going to use it again. And now we can make a boost for it. Boosh here. So yeah, just continue to boosh all the way through the uh, douche. Now this is actually timed as well, so you do have to be as quick as you can. So just sprint it down, go towards the left of the gate, jump over the rock if you can which you should be able to, and you should just about make it there. So again, that is a time section, so um, if you fail and it starts disappearing, sadly you'll just have to nip back to the beginning and do it again. Um, but it's not too bad, like I said, just go around to the right, stick with the left, and you'll be absolutely fine. So heading the opposite side of this big lake then, as you can see, we've just got a big massive mountain rock in front of us, what seems like nothing. But we actually need to start climbing up. You can see the waterfall there in the distance, so just continue climbing up there for a minute. So we're going to jump over to the left now. And go ahead and light yourself up again. This is another um, sort of puzzle where we have to do it with the spirit. And we basically have to turn these slabs with the B button. So, go weightless, go up past the waterfall to the right. Um, and head up. Now, there are two slabs, as I said. So, what we're going to need, go to the left here. Left again, press the B button. Now, here, if you're quick enough, you can actually press the B button twice so that it does move twice. Um, so it's the same sort of um, rhythm every time, it's the same sort of, it's the same path every time for a minute. So again, press the B button on the left one. So basically, you see that little swirl? It was like an oyster swirl. Um, that basically just needs to be the opposite side. That is how we are doing the puzzle. So again, jump up here. We're going to go to the right one this time. And so where we just were... The two oysters need to be basically facing towards where we are now, if that makes sense. So this is where I actually hit the B button twice, so the oyster goes around to the other side. And then, once done, and if done correctly, you will get the swirly twirly bad boy of life. And we can be on our merry little way. Hooray! Go to the left then. And interact with the stone. Next, we're going to go basically straight in front of us now, jump over the waterfall to the rock, and get yourself infused with some more light. It's a bright light all day when you fox, yeah, fox a big year. Right, uh, make sure to jump back over, try not to fall into the water, otherwise you'll have to clamber back up again, and then continue forwards. But only very slightly, because now we're going to take a right and jump over the waterfall. So, nice easy little bit coming up. It's not so much a puzzle as we just put these lights in any of the stones that, well, don't have lights in them.
So finally, we can sprint dash. You press the right trigger and you do a little sprint dash. So what we're gonna do next then, again, a little bit of an edit, but get yourself lit up. And then if you turn around, you can see a couple of hills that we're gonna start heading up just here. So yeah, this makes it even a little bit quicker again. So, and if you wanna jump and sprint dash as well, just go mad. Anyway, we're heading towards the old crookedy building, perfect for an Assassin's Creed Prince of Persia style jump. And then we can head through here, wait until the door's fully open, and then sprint dash your way through. Boop, there we go, job done. Same with this one, but make sure to grab the shaman stick first from the... The Fox Statue! Nim, 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 nim. Everybody remembers that song, don't they? Yes, it was terrible, but so catchy. Right, sprint dash your way through again, and that is lovely. So that's the next shaman stick done. Right. What we'll do here is we're actually just going to drop the shaman stick just by this door because we've got a puzzle, the uh, turning puzzle stone puzzle thing to do. So the first one here is on the left. So there we go. We're going to pop that down and we're going to leave it at people lying down. And it'll be the same. There's going to be another one. So if you stick to the left hand side, there it is. And it will be the same again. So people lying down, that kind of one and turn around directly in front of us. There's the next one. So you can head through the door, but remember, pick up that shaman stick. Ah, cheers, bruv. Seems like we could have just fitted through the gap in the wall, but that's okay. So that's another uh, spirit done, so we can start heading back towards the way we came. So continue to spirit dash. Again, this is going to be like a sort of tutorial of sorts as we head down to the ground. So it's going to be a case of you'll have to jump and sprint dash in order to get to the other side a couple of times. But it's generally uh, quite easy. And in fact, we're doing that after this bit then. So what we're going to do, we are going to stand on this platform. We are going to go into spirit form. Again, remember, by pressing the X button, or square, I suppose, on PlayStation. Jump over, and then quickly hit the Y button next to the uh, stand, uh, the stone on the other side. So, sprint dash over, drop down, and quickly use the stone, and that should open a door for us to get through. So yeah, a little bit more dashing, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, but hit the B button here on this stone in order to change it around. And we are going for the mountains, which look like they got a big pile of rocks on them there. So go to the other side and then just pressing the B button a couple of times will work wonders. Yeah. And there we go. So that's working. So bump, sprint dash over to the other side. And then are you ready? Ready to crap your fox pants? Sprint dash. Remember, of course, to always sprint dash, even if you think you're not going to get it. Right, grab the shaman stick here from the steps. And from here, we are going to go continuing upwards. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like elevator music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is fuming, mate. He could have stayed alive, but he dropped his shaman stick at the very end, and you know, well, death, etc. Right, drop down. Go for a nice swim. So once we've got uh, to this point then, sticking with the left hand wall as much as you can, we're continuing straight up. You can see this little igloo looking non-igloo in here. So we'll press the white button and get that lit up like an absolute Las Vegas GP. And which was actually one of the best Grand Prix of the season actually, wasn't it? Right, so jump across. You can see this little, kind of looks like a little graveyard or something, but we're not actually going into said graveyard. We're going... Straight across, and then down at the end here are some flowers to get some lighty light. <laughs> so we're now going to take the hill and go up, uh, left and up, sorry. So there we go. Next up, we are going to go into this next igloo looking building. Or a crappy helmet. Kind of looks like a uh, Star Wars helmet, but terribly, uh, really terribly. So drop back down, grab the flowers and head back up. This time you're gonna take a slight right and we're about to get another achievement as well. Um, but what we're going to do, first of all, is if we head through to this little tiny gap area, uh, you can see that there are some flowers, which again, we will come back for in just a minute. But you can see this little ancient mural type thing, whatever it's called. Ancient murals, sorry, not mural. Uh, you can actually press the Y button here um, in order to get that lit up, and that'll get you the ancient history achievement. And once you've got yourself lit up again, go to the second one. Now, we actually can't jump in just yet. The... Uh, Somehow, even though he's a fox and he's capable of doing lots of jumping, he can't actually climb in. So, light up the second mural and then go and grab yourself some light again. And then we're going to have to head all the way to the opposite side. So, I'll show you where we're going. You, you're going to see, uh, effectively, just a ball in the distance. In a minute. As soon as we get that one lit up. Did I light that one up twice? That's weird. Did I try and light the first one up twice? Meh. Anyway, once you've got both of those lit up, as I said, you can see in the distance there's a big ball. That is where we're heading. Right, finally, once that is done, the ball's gonna start rolling like a pinball machine. Like a gumball machine. Or oh, some kind of ball machine. Uh, so we'll just continue heading it. Uh, heading it. We ain't heading that. Not bloody Chris Redfield from Resident Evil, are we? Punching a boulder up a smouldering lava hill. Um, so once the ball gets there, that will actually open up the way. The water will rise, and we can go straight ahead. And dry. Right, slight new area then. So we're going to head to the left first of all. This is actually the area where we just lit up the two murals, by the way. Go in the gap here in the archway to pick up another shaman stick. A shaman stick? It's your mom stick. Uh, go straight and slightly right and then into this little 
building area is the next one. There you go, buddy. Spirits. Good, bro. Good. Right, so, uh, continue following this path along. Go take a left. Jump down. Oh, yes. And then we'll go and get ourselves lit up, of course, again. So here, don't take a left, take another left. And we're going back, we're going to be doing some more jumping and sprint dashing over these bridges. So when we get here, we're going to take a right, and we're basically going to get well, we've got to release your balls. That's that's the only way I can put it bluntly. So interact with the stone. That'll get your balls out, and your ball will roll. And it'll eventually become nasty and saggy. Right, for the love of God, be careful here. So get yourself lit up. Now, what I ended up doing stupidly was actually falling off straight into the river. So it took me like three minutes to get back up here. So go around there. Don't fall down like idiot like I did. This is where you can also get the weightless achievement if you don't have it yet. Um, but quickly jump up anyway on the platform as the cat and then head around. Go to the left of when we come out of here and quickly interact with the stone. We've just about done that one, actually. So yeah, you'll have to quickly jump up, basically go out, go to the left, and there it is. So apologies that was a bit quick, but again, um, because you end up walking on a, an unstable platform, you will get the weightless achievement there if you didn't get it earlier. Right, so as you can see, that has happily lent us the way forward. But go ahead and get yourself lit up like a Christmas tree once again. <laughs> Ready to fall? Ah, boink. There we go. Nice little boink. So um, yeah, that's that's uh, that's about it. Right, start heading up the right hand side. Do a little jump and sprint dash. Go on, sprint dash it. Just about made that hilariously. Uh, from here, we're going to go to the right and start heading down. Basically, just across the water, there is another building with a little shaman stick in it. So here, we'll obviously take a right, we're going to stand on the pressure plate again, and then we will dash our way in, as soon as the door opens, lovely. Boosh! Straight, oh look at that, tell you what, that just caught, that just nipped me on the tail sack, that did. Uh, so continue on upwards, and there is the next dead guy, who just wants his stick back. So once he's got a stick back, let's jump onto the next part of the building, basically a bit of platform in here, and continuing straight onwards. Now, there is a little bit of tar here. It doesn't matter if you get caught in the tar. You just you get your bottom half soaked in tar, but um, you won't actually die or anything. So, near panic, near bother, near panic, no bother. All right, so continue onwards here. We're going to light up this part. And then just continue forwards. Now, it can be a bit confusing. Now, what you can do as well, uh, you can actually get... You can actually go to the top. So there's two ways to get through here, on the, to the top of the mountains, or doing it this way in the underbelly of the tar. So, once we have done that and you've got yourself a light, now we can go... With, this is basically where we just got the stone lit up, so we can jump up. Uh, jump across to the other side. Head to the left, and then, again, a bit, bit of careful platforming required here. So just jump across, lovely. Oh my god, stop falling! Stop falling on... 
me! Okay, so, uh, we're gonna light this bit up. Now, actually, what we do need, uh, there is a shaman stick, which I almost missed. It's basically on top of the building where the first air booster is. So, uh, I do, again, I do apologize. Again, I wish this guide was a little bit smoother. Uh, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get it out. So, uh, what we're going to do, once you have gotten yourself lit up, we, go, we are going to jump up. We are going to jump across to the right. Now, this time, instead of... Well, I was going to say, instead of going there, um, go to the opposite side, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. Because I'm being stupid, man. Come on, douche nasal. There we go. So we jump to the other side. And now we can jump across to the other platform, go to the left, and you can see it standing there in all its glory. So again, a bit of a weird way I've done that one. So again, I do apologize, but you know, we got there eventually. So from here then, what we can do, we are going to go uh, try and stay as close as you can and not fall. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you do fall here, obviously we can just air boost our way back up, that's fine. And this time we can continue onwards, so to the left and through the next air boost. But what we're going to need to do, when we get up to this air boost, you need to dash to the left slightly. So dash now, and you will get on top of here. Uh, th that's the only way you can get up, by the way, so once you've done that, you should be good. If not, just, uh, you know, jump up and go again. We're going to be coming up to another... This is actually one of the rare missable achievements uh, that we need to get, which is not story-related. Uh, so just stand here and go weightless for the time being. Now, what we do need to get, so we'll jump up. Now, to do this bit, what you need to do is actually aim the camera towards the... As we quickly light up that, hopefully you did that in time. But when you go to the second one, basically, it's going to shoot you to the left slightly. So you need to point the camera slightly right and then use your sprint dash. So what I was trying to figure out for ages with why it wasn't working, you can't actually use the left stick to um, choose where the fox goes, you've got to point the camera. So just in case you were getting a bit confused like I was with that, and that's what you do. So anyway, we've got it all lit up, so we're all good. So we will jump across. Again, make sure your camera is pointing slightly right, and then do the sprint dash. Now we're going to be doing another achievement here. So basically we have to stay in the air for eight seconds. Now, there's a sort of way to do it. You have to so you can't touch the ground for eight seconds. Now, this is angled. This last one here is angled at such a way that you can do it. But it's you've got to get the camera pointed quite, you know, basically perfectly. Um, and again, it's a weird one. But don't be too quick with the sprint dash and don't try and take too long. Otherwise, as you can see, you will fall terribly. So it's uh, it's a tricky one. And th this one, I'm ashamed to say, this took me almost 10 minutes of trying because I just couldn't get the bloody angles right. But anyway, once you've got it perfect and you just keep doing the same thing, there we go. That is how you get the fox or flying squirrel achievement. Now, this is the easiest place that I found to do this with the geysers. It was just a bit unpredictable and a bit crappy, so that's why we didn't bother. But we've done that there. So once you've done that one, we can continue onwards and do this part of the puzzle. So there's another three slabs we're going to turn. So for this one, we are going to go with the mountain tops here with the little snow, the little circles on top. Up to the one directly opposite. This time we are going for the mountain with the uh, sort of rock piles on them. And then in the middle, we're going to the um, mountains with the bit of wind. A bit of wind. We all suffer with wind. Um, and a long foxtail apparently. Right, before moving on, go to the left there, grab the shaman stick. It's shaman, and we jamming. Oh yeah, baby, we're shamming and jamming and sticking the stuff. Okay, so once we get the shaman stick, we are going to go down to the bottom. And you don't actually have to press anything here, um, so just keep your control. It, it looks like you need to sprint dash, but you don't. You will just fall, and you'll have to do it again. Now, the next deceased dead guy is not Mia. But if we just go to the opposite side, and uh, there's going to be a little bit of a cutscene where it's like, Oh, look, someone smeared blood in the sky. Excuse me, sir. Get your blood out of my face. So, 
There's going to be like a little bridge just underneath um, this area that we're in now. And that is where the next deceased guy is. But the... Again, now I actually did fail this bit twice. But you can see the bridge just there. So drop down and make sure to sprint dash just as you get to the end. And that is where he is. I think the only... The only annoying thing with this game, as we do drop back down, but the only annoying thing with this game is the fact that, of course, if you fall, it's not just a quick boost up. It's like, oh, are you got to find the beginning bit, or you got to... Ah, oh, see? Damn it! Um, sorry. <laughs> got, uh, got some road rage out right there on my computer. Uh, but yeah, so it can, especially the swimming sections, if you fall in that, it's a pain to try and get back up. Right, so uh, just jump straight across... And, well, we're tarring up life, apparently. Right, so, more stuff to do then. Okay, so first of all, we're going to head back on ourselves and we're going to go ahead and grab some flowers. Uh, it should be, well, there's the first thing is what we need to destroy. So, uh, head over, destroy this, and then we're going to go and grab some flowers, of course. So that'll be the first plague tether done, and it goes from tar to war tar. <laughs> what, dear? Oh, see, I know you're selling water, but I'm not convinced you're actually trying to sell me water. Uh, all American dad stuff, sorry. And I probably just said that wrong, too. Right, anyway, so now we can, as you can see, the water rose just a little bit. It's exactly what we need. So heading up to where we got shot out of. And if we continue onwards, you are eventually going to see the stone slab here. So we'll just turn that one uh, till the people are holding stuff. Jump across the gap. The next one we're going to do with the um, fox. Well, it's kind of like a crab monster thing. But you only needed to turn that once. Anyway, that gets a platform rising. So straight in front of us is going to be some flowers. And then just head towards that plague tether. And tether and untether the unplague. So from here then, there's two ways to go, straight or left. This time we're going to go to the left. We don't actually need anything straight now. So lefty it is. All the right wingers are furious with that right now. I am not going bloody left. No, oh, I'm righty. I love Tories messing up this country. Uh, so make sure you get... I'm, I'm sorry. Get yourself lit up, jump across. And again, jump across, and then you do need to jump on this big uh, stone here, and then press the Y button in order to get it lit up, and then go and get some more flowers for your powers. Okay, so with that done, we're going to go back and get ourselves another little light up. Wow. And then we're just going to go ahead, swim across. We don't need anything with that uh, platformy thing that we just done. So uh, into this little building, let's stand on it. Stand on it. Stand on it. Stand on it. Okay, go into your spirit form and go to the left and quickly bash this out. B -b 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 bash it out. Now go backwards and swim, little donkey. Swim, 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 swim to the right. And don't give uh, Scheisenhausens. Anyway, when we swim to the right, we're going to find some flowers and then we're going to go through this little gap we're just swimming past.
So that's another one. Boom, boom, boom. Just give me that. Boom, boom. Just give me that. Give me that. Boom, boom, boom. I don't care what you got. Just give me that. As I said in my previous video, go listen to Skin Dread if you haven't already. Right, now, one thing I did realize here is you could simply sprint dash, which is nice. So get yourself lit up. Sprint dash, so uh, over to this part here with the geyser, over the sploosh zone. Sorry, it's a lot funnier when it's called the sploosh zone. Huh. Uh, it's going to sploosh you up. Now, what I would highly recommend here is, now obviously what you're supposed to do is wait until the geyser pops up and then get yourself in there. But for some reason, I was absolutely sucking donkey bum at doing that. So, there's a bunch of flowers there. Get yourself lit up and just sprint dash your way across. Mushos Isios. And now what I did try and attempt to do it there was get onto the top one, um, but obviously that went as well as uh, to be expected, which didn't go well at all. So that's fine though, if you end up dropping here, that's fine. So obviously, if you did get up to the top, you can just continue going up to the top and going straight ahead. Um, but again, it doesn't matter because there is a way that we can get up to the top anyway. So there we go, and it'll be like doing this. There we go, so job done. No harm, no foul. Right, uh, I am actually trying to get up to this little part here. There we go, that was the plan. Um, jump. Uh, ugh, basically, jump straight across the tar. Now, we're going to open this one up. That's going to get us a little circular motion hole going. So, bump, bump, straight up. There we go, that's what we're looking for, boys. Yeah, yeah. Right, quickly as we can now, get back into spirit form. Quickly dash through and just jump straight across and smash out this plague tether. Ah! Right, oh, so before going forward, go back and just get yourself another little light up. We basically have to sprint dash to the top. Now, this part was a pain in my absolute rectimii. Um, purely because I fell down and for some reason could not find a way to get back up until it was simply obvious, which I will tell you um, just when we get there. So if you do end up um, falling off the top platform, as we're going to see here, there's basically a button that you stand on and it boosts you back up. So that was annoying. But anyway, uh, jump across and we're going to get this shaman stick here. Now again, like I said, first time I fell down and I was like, how the hell do I get back up? As it turns out, stand on this button for a few seconds and it boosts you up. So that's just to save time if you did mess up like I did. So once you grab your shaman stick... I wonder if there's actually people out there called shaman or shaman. Shaman sounds very Irish. Shaman sounds very, you know, Jamaican-y, maybe? Hey, shaman! Get that debunk, shaman, now, man. Hey, shaman. Yeah, anyway, I'm going to stop offending people now. Uh, so once we go through this sort of uh, kind of linear path, there's a little piece in the back we can go through here. So nip it up through there. And again, this bit's okay because if you do get lost and confused, as we can see on the right, um, obviously you can just follow the your little wispy boy. Wispy boy, your oh, wispy boy. So we are obviously looking for the deceased person who is not around here. He is actually just a floor below. So, we do have to go up in order to get below. It does make sense, I swear. So, <laughs> what we will do here, when we get up to this, port, uh, this point then, we can actually drop down. And, you know, just to, to get that air boost up, by the way, you just have to turn that slab in front of us once. Um, obviously, because of my idiocy, I, I'd obviously come here and wasted about 15 minutes. So, just turn that slab once in order to get that air boost up. Go around it and past it, jump across here to the next platform, and there is Dead Gear. Now, once you have Dead Gear done, you can um, 
Well, there's only one way to go, and you can simply just jump across to the bridge. Lovely. And then continue onwards. And air boost your hair boost. But damn, dog. And then we can just continue going straight on. So we've already got five of the collectibles left to grab now. And we are coming up to chapter six very soon. But go ahead and take a right up this hill. A couple of dashes, you know, a couple of dash of lemon. And up the hill, up the rocks. Here we go. Smash it in. And then... Nya, nya. Nya, 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 nya. We are free! Uh, well, not really, but still. So, continue on. Oh, my God. I got my five feet wet now. Right, it looks like it's snowing blood. Snowing blood! I'm surprised snowing blood is not a song yet. Anyway, take a left there when we get here, and we are going to turn it once, and that will get a bridge appearing for us. Out of the tar and into the... Arr. Out of the tar and into the R. Arr. So uh, let us jump across. Now, be careful here. Um, sort of do it from as far right as you can. Because if you do it too far left, you'll actually hit the rock and fall down into the tar, which is a pain in the R. So uh, transform it and put it into the crab-like whatever the hell that's supposed to be. That's going to get bridge number one done. Bridge one, number one, done, done. And then what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to uh, stop at... Oh, in fact, we're going to have to go and get some flowers first, which will be here on the left. And then we're going to go onto the bridge, but we're going to have to go in wait form. Uh, spirit form, sorry. So you'll have to wait ever so slightly. Ever so slightly you'll have to wait there. So, drop here and then we can jump up. Of course, remember, you'll have to be quick. So, jump as quickly as you can. And then press the B button twice on here. You should have just enough time. Do it again. And then it should, hopefully, if you've managed to do it in time. That'll get the next bridge up. It'll also get you the matchmaker achievement there again. Unmissable match for matching 12 sets of matching glyphs. Um, but, of course, if that doesn't appear, you'll have to... Ah, oh, damn it! That's fine. We can just go up and around and do it again. Um... Yeah, but, so, but obviously if you don't do it, just um, go around and press the B button on it one more time. Uh, otherwise, if we're all good, we can just simply jump straight across. Not not there. Not there, you stupid fox. I say stupid fox, it was me who controlled it. <laughs> anyway, uh, sprint dash, spirit dash your way across. Should be able to just make this one, and there it is. Uh, so what we'll do is head down the steps first, head right, and into this little chilly boneyard graveyard. Press the Y button, let's get that sorted, and then go to the left before we move on in order to get the next sure monstick. It is the sure monstick of life. Uh, right, so obviously climb up again, and then what we're going to do... There's no spirit dash, so basically you just have to make a run and jump for it and hope that you make it. So, it's effectively going straight and jump! Jump free, Willy! Jump! Okay then, so, we are on to now, effectively, the last chapter with puzzles and stuff. So the final two chapters are very easy to do, although we do have to do a little bit of finding all the spirits in chapter 7, but that's fine. So we're going straight forward for now. Here's the flowers, um, which we'll come back to, but you can see a little gap, so jump across the gap straight away. And then up this little rampy part. 
in fact, no, not across the rampy part, sorry, back behind you and get rid of this first plague tether. I told the plague doctor I was in love with you, bum, 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 bum. But anyway, once that opens, we can now go ahead and grab the shaman stick right here. I told the plague doctor to stop giving me the AIDS and plagues. I told the witch doctor. So jump back down to the right here and then just follow the path around. It can get slightly dark for the time being, but that's fine. Drop this. Get yourself lit up again. I told the weird doctor. And then jump across the same gap. And then this time we are actually going up the ramp and we're going to jump across the platform to the other side here and then do the same thing again. So there's going to be a platform over to the left. So run, running it, gunning it, and simply drop the shaman stick and away we go. Right, so all you got to do here is press the B button once. Uh, like a silly sausage, I once again wasted my light here. And yeah, so even if you just press the B button once, it's going to do this anyway. But that's okay because there is a little place where we can go and grab... Uh, where we could go and grab some more light anyway. So first thing we'll do, we'll try and follow that red demon light. I see a demon light. And I do not like it. It does not delight me, the demon light. So the very left one, uh, it's basically going to slam the door. We ain't getting through there just yet, which is fine. So from here then, if you were like me and accidentally wasted your light, head behind the pillars or the, sl or the glyphs or whatever. Go down this little kind of tiny alleyway. And to the left, I believe, or straight on or something. But anyway, here is some more flowers if needed. So just go back the way we came and then we're going to do some platforming and then climbing up in. Right, so once we drop down here then, just continue going straight forward in front of us. You're going to see the little, uh, we need to go into the little spirit form. Head up the steps again as quickly as possible. And then press the white button here next to the stone in order to get the ball dropping. And the way gopping. So once we regain control of Mr. Foxhard, um, go back down in what looks like a weird, dingy little nothingness. Uh, we're going to grab the next shaman stick. So go straight back down. It looks like you're going backwards. That's probably because we are. But the shaman stick in the darkness is right there. So, you know, don't want to be leaving without it. All right. Once we do here, go up the steps. And then what we're going to do is take a right here in order to go up some more steps but for some reason I got confused and lost as I have done a few times in this guide sorry sorry uh, but there we go so up the steps we go and what we're going to do is actually take the light back from this stone so press the white button in order to take the light back from this stone and where we are we're going to just jump straight across you can see just in the distance there there is a platform we need to get on so Running it, gunning it, killing it, skinning it, jump over, you should make it, and this is where the next shaman bra is. And then you can just go ahead and jump straight back across. What? Yes, there we go. 
So, one, with this one done, that's the next Shaman stick. We're going to go straight past the uh, light, or the stone, sorry. Jump down, and then continue onwards, downwards. Jump straight across, give yourself Spirit Dash if you need. We've only got two more collectibles in which to grab now. Let's press the Y button on here to get this bit lit up. Now, it may look, it may look like we're doing nothing in this bit, but, you know me, where there's a plan... There's a man who wants some scran. Anyway, once this is done, go straight forward. You can see a little seesaw bridge. So all we need to do is actually just put this down. And then jump across to the right and go back out. And the reason we're doing that is we need to get the spirit form uh, flying up. Which is why we just done that. So just in case you were wondering. There we go. So we'll just take the light back. Yeah. Take the light back and then it goes straight and then eventually we're going to come up to it. There it is. So, our spirit bra. Now we can go up the ramp. Jump straight across. And then dash yourself in. Job done. There we go. Pop that stone light in. You can obviously see the shaman stick exactly right next to it. This is now going to open up the way for us. <laughs> Sorry, I do like to break out in song, you know. Right, so, go the new way, which seems dark and seems dark, but it is dark. And here we are then, just coming up to where the spirit form just was. So pick up the shaman stick, of course. And we can take the light back, which is exactly what we're going to do. And from here, all we're doing is basically going right. So slightly right, and there is the next deceased dude. Then there is just one left, which we're going to grab. Right, so when we get here, we're going to go down, so straight through the middle and down. And we are going to be getting the next Shaman Stick, so we are going to go all the way around the right there. And this is where the final Shaman Stick is. Shame on! Shame on you, man! Oh, I'm so sorry. Anyway, press the Y button here in order to get the light stoning up the slabby way. And this is kind of a puzzle, actually, which seems obvious at first, but as it turns out, no puzzle is ever obvious. <laughs> right, so now we're going to go up to the right. I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind. I am losing my mind. Make sure to grab the light with you this time. Um, and we'll just go up, jump across, and here is the next light we're actually going to use. So that, again, should get the puzzle going. There it is. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to get uh, take the light back again. Make sure to take the light back again so you're all infused. And then jump straight across. And then go through this little dingy darkness. And this is where the final soul is. Rests and lays, and this should now get you the uh, kindred, uh, nope, the none forgotten achievement. So, again, providing you've been following the guide, you should now get all 28 shaman spirits done, and that'll be that. So, you're just sort of following the path around in order to get now to this next stone. There we go, so that's all 28. But again, like I said in chapter 7, we have to meet all of these spirits, which is not a pain at all. Um, which is actually not so much a pain, as much as people want to tell you it is. It's not. Excuse me, that was digesting. I'm so sorry. Right, so once that one's done, again, make sure you get your light back, and then you're just following the path, the same path around, uh, to get back out. So there we go, so just go ahead and jump across again. And now we have basically done with this area, so we'll jump up. And now it should be open for us perfect in order to just nip on through. So keep uh, continue to 
keep humping the wall, apparently, or climbing up the steps. Jump across again. Now, this time, effectively, what we're doing now is just following the red light. So, this is more of a linear path, so just continue to uh, follow the red broski. So here we are then at chapter 7, um, obviously a live bro is not so alive at the minute. So for the minute all we're doing is effectively just following the white, uh, white bright light and then we are going to find all 28 spirits and meet and greet them which should take between sort of 15 to 20 minutes. So here is the start of it then, when we come between these two trees, make sure to, th this is a big, big forest, 
So make sure to be following me carefully. So we're going to continue by sticking with the right hand side wall. We are going to go up to the first spirit. Now, uh, again, just continue to follow the right hand wall. Now, they're not in random locations, but some of these do walk around. So the first spirit should be around the general area. So if you can, so he should be here, uh, roughly around here. So if you can't see him, don't just go off in 20 directions. Have a little look around the general area and they should be walking around. So for me, he's just going to start appearing. Um, he's just going to be coming up here. There he is. So they don't walk off too far. So like I said, if you, if your one is not in the exact same location I am uh, that mine is, he's going to be walking around the general area. Anyway, this is the first spirit, the classic cocktail fist fish house punch so from here we will continue basically straight and sort of left as it were so sort of straight left yeah so again at the minute just continue going straight and then what we're looking for basically on on our left hand side um is like a fox statue so if we continue heading to the left again just don't worry about it just continue heading to the left So there we go, we've just gone past the fox statue. So now we're just going to go basically across a bunch of jaggedy rocks here. And what you should see now is a, a couple of fires in the distance and there should be two spirits that should be in the same location. One is called a gin and the other one is called martini. So um, I don't know, I just bark at, if you get a couple, I just bark at the both of them just to be like, hello. But anyway, that is done. So hi gin and hi martini. Right, so on to the fourth one now. So if you go basically back the way we came, so through the fires, and then slightly right here, you're going to keep going straight. Again, just uh, take a look at my surroundings, hopefully you'll be in the same sort of path, you can see this big giant rock that's in the way. So continue forward, uh, basically now just going across the water, up to the other side. Now like I said, this is, uh, you know, it, it does take a minute or two to get to each spirit, so that's why it does take about 16 to 20 minutes. So uh, you can obviously, now we can see a big, big massive whole cliff on our right hand side, past a big massive tree, fox statue on the left there. And when we go back to this tree, continue on, there's a fallen log there we just went past on our left. And then what we should see is, well, effectively, just trees and a big... As long as you've still got this big cliff on the right-hand side, you should still be okay. This is what we need. It's a big path like this, and he's effectively on this path. Somewhere is the fourth spirit. He is called Tom Collins, and he is around here somewhere. He should be on this path. So again, if he's not for you, like I said, as he's not for me at the minute, just keep on walking around and he will be in this general area, as I said. All right, then. So from here, we'll just continue straight on. And uh, again, obviously, you can see massive tree in front of us. We're going to take a right hand side from that tree first and then we will continue basically onwards and we're going to start heading slightly downhill and there's going to be a broski pray, uh, praying and that is where the next one is uh, this guy this guy's this spirit's name is called vodka so nice and easy there he is vodka's praying pray that i don't get hangover <laughs> Right, 
Right, so next up, we are going to turn around and effectively go straight. And it's uh, not going to be too far, the next one. Now, um, if we head to the left of where all these trees are and everything, um, you can see a, a fallen log there on your left. We're going basically back across the water. Uh, still keeping with the left-hand side. And he is going to be in this general area. So this spirit's name is called Moscow Mule. Um, but he's going to be in this area somewhere. There he is. So say hello, Moscow Mule. Right then, so we're basically just going back around the way we came. So go back down the hill. And then we will continue on sort of straightwards past these bunch of whole bunch of trees right here over and up this rock. So we're going up the stream now, as it were. And then when we get upstream, we're going to go left stream over this broken log. And we're going to take a straight. <laughs> Sorry, I thought we were going to go left, but no, it's, we're going straight for now. And then we will continue onwards. And he's going to be in this general area here. So if he's not here, he's probably down. And this guy's, uh, this spirit's name is Bloody Mary. So Bloody Mary. There he is then. So like I said, if he's not up by the log, he's going to be in this general area. Hello, Bloody Mary. How we do? Right. So once we're done, we can now go actually through this big, giant, massive log. Now we will find our next whiskey. This, uh, next whiskey. Our next spirit. This one is actually called Whiskey. Incredible, huh? So for now, actually, we're just going to keep on continuing to follow the path down. And he should be not too far away from us now. So you can see the big fox statue there on the left we're going past. So continue onwards. And to the right, there he is. So again, he's going to be on this general path. Hello, Sir Whiskey. Um, right, so once we have done that, we're basically now going to go back the way we came. Uh, no, sorry, straight forward the way we came. No, just straight forward. Sorry, what am I going like? No, we are going back the way we came. Ah, oh, God damn it, I'm so sorry. So, yes, you are going back the way you came. So, obviously, you'll see now the fox statue. There it is. So, go to the right of the fox statue, back into the stream, and stick with the right-hand side. Big giant trees on the left there, so we can now continue on. You can see the fox statue there, just in front of us. <clears throat> so from here, we will take a slight left. And we are going to uh, now, as we get to this path, take a right, just to go through these sets of trees right here, a little gap in between. And then we are going to go ahead and take a left. This one is quite long and quite, it was quite annoying to find actually from there. And he's going to be in this general area again. So we'll just continue heading up the hill. He is, he is definitely in this part of the area, but he is more up the hill than down it. Um, so, uh, and this next spirit's name is Maker's Mark. It's a great name. So yeah, he's not going to be down. If, if anything, he is going to be more up the hill. Ah, there you are, Maker's Mark. You stupid guy! Oh, you stupid spirit, even! Anyway, once that spirit's finally done, this is not a new one. That's uh, obviously a bit of an edit there. Uh, so as you continue going forwards, down this next little linear path, and as we take a right, go across the stream, go straight ahead. And we are actually going to be coming up to the next one, just in this little, kind of like little village area. So jump onto the rocks here on the left-hand side. And jump onto this next platform. Make a jump across. So you should be able to just make it. There we go. Jump across, take left. There we go. Across the next one. 
Then across the next one, and he's up on the big rock here on the left, and this spirit's name is called Woodford. Uh, Woodford Reserve, which is a bit of a nice name for spirit, but there he goes. So jump across to interact with and speak to Woodford Reserve. Hello there. Favorite drink is bourbon or anything? Yeah, I know. I know. Right, so continuing on from there, we're actually coming up to the castle now. Um, so you can see again, big fox statue there on the left. That's where we should be right now. Jump across. And effectively just go straight down past the waterfall. And then continuing upwards through this little gap. Seems like you can't get past, but as it turns out, you can. And in this little village area, this is what I meant. We're going to find our next spirit. Say hello to Jameson. Hello, Jameson. There we go. So that's the next one done. So from uh, this spirit then, we are going to continue straight forward. Basically up the little parts of Hilly Hills. Go left into this little igloo looking bunker thing. And we can find the Prince Crown Royal. So say hello to Crown Royal. And then when we back, uh, get out of here, go down this time. So back down to the right. Continue left. And then obviously up this little part. Continuing all the way left. And you should be able to find in this little general area then the next spirit. He is called Jack. So say hello to Jack Daniels, everyone. More specifically with honey. I like honey. So from here, uh, what we're going to do is go around. So to the left. Go onto this little platform here. Jump down onto this little platform. Go around, and this is where we'll find number 14, spirit number 14. And he is actually called, uh, he's a bit of a nutbag, but he is called Screwball. Which is a peanut butter whiskey, actually. Uh, so, Screwball. Yes, you can see what I'm doing with the names, can't you? Spirits, and yeah, all cocktails with spirits, yeah. Just in case you weren't figuring that one out. So, jumping back across then, we will go for the uh, next spirit. So, we are continuing on the high road. On the high road to hell. I'm on the high road to hell. So just going straight down and this next one should be in the next journal area. Say hello to the Mexican. Tequila. Tequila, tequila. Oh baby, when you talk like So from here then, we're going to take a right. And you can see bits of light, bits of water. But there's the next one. And this one is called... Uh, Margarita. So, hello, Margarita. So, it should be praying, so it should be there for you all the time. So, from Margarita, we are going to take a left down and in next into this little sheltered accommodation area. Um, so, if we go behind it, there's basically a little... Um, there is a little stone that we need to interact with. Uh, for some reason, I'm getting confused. So we need to interact with that stone in order to get a little air boost. From here. There we go. So it's actually right next to the little igloo bit there. So there we go. Uh, get some more light if you need it. And then wait. And then pounce and go. Right, so once we land on the uh, roof of life, we're going to drop straight down. Go to the left-hand side here and continue on upwards. All the way up. Uh, we're basically, we are kind of back just at the castle bit now, which is fine. It's what we need. Um, so this time, what we're going to do is actually go straight ahead. Take a right in order to go up some steps. And... Now, like I said, now we are really at the castle area here. So we're actually going to take a left at this point. So there we go. So we'll go straight ahead of us. There are four which we're going to grab here. One will be walking around and three will be stood still. So there's the next one. He is called Paloma. So hello, Paloma. And then if we just continue on going around, we're going to go down these steps here. And then on the right hand side you're going to see three standing there so the three like i said should always be standing there and the fourth one will be sta um um walking around so one is called rum say hi rum one is called mojito and one is called daiquiri or dakiri for short 
So from the three, if you turn around, you can see the fox statue. There's basically two in huts that we're going to grab. The first one is here on the right, and he is called uh, Brandy. Say hi, Brandy. So again, apologize that was a bit quick, but again, from the three that you were, just turn around and you'll see the fox statue and these two huts. Um, and the next one is called Sidecar. So hello, Sidecar. So we are getting close to it. In fact, we're only nine minutes away now from completing the end of the game, really. Uh, finally. Right, so from here then, we're going to go um, straight up. Um, and we're going to drop down. So drop down. This is where the next one is. He is called Brandy Alexander. It's a great name. So hello, Brandy, Mr. Alexander. So that's just the same one, so don't worry about there. you just seen him walking in there. So what we're going to do now from here is actually go into the building here with the two flames either side. And go up the steps. We are going to find our next one. And he is called Absinthe. Mm, and everyone like an Absinthe, huh? They do. So we are basically back on the castle roof, which is fine. It's what we need to do. We actually just need to go past the three spirits... Um, whatever their names were now, I actually forgot. So, pa past the fox statue, past the three spirits. And we need to go straight and then down. Take a left into this little building where we are going to find Absinthe. Um, pff, well, he's looking a bit off his tits at the minute, isn't he? What's he doing with his hands? Hi, 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 hi. Right, so continue going down. So, take a right. This is where Amaretto is. Hello, Amaretto. And we should now be on three left only. So we should only have three left now. So from here, go straight and then up the steps this time. So up the steps we go. When we drop down, we can go straight a little bit. And then we're going to take the next left here. Well, not here, but quite here. But not here, but how about quite here? There we go. So take the next left. These should now be these last three. These are called Amaro, Aperol, and Benedictine. And once you have interacted with all three of them, yes, the Kindred Spirits achievement will unlock. So that's for locating and greeting all the spirits in the spirit world. And that is it. So th that part wasn't generally too bad. The, the hardest bits really were just trying to find the quickest path that we can go rather than, you know, instead of trying to get lost and everything. So... Once that's done and you've lit up the way, we've effectively got one chapter where you just have to walk for a few minutes.
that was a big old walk, wasn't it? Right, so we can drop down here, and then if you look behind us, you can see um, water, which we can walk on. And uh, that's basically going to be the end of Chapter 7. So if you look around and turn to the right and behind you now. Now? Now, damn it! There we go. There's the little gap. That's what we're looking for. So go across, interact with your dead self, and this will be the end of Chapter 7. So once we get to the top of here, then you are going to have to wait for just a few minutes. Basically, we beat the uh, last spirit, but we have to actually wait for him in order for the cutscene to progress and the final achievement to unlook. Aurora Borealis, localized in, at this time of day, at this time of year, localized entirely within your kitchen. Yes. May I see it? Mm, no. Right, anyway, if you know what that's from, bonus points for you. But once you press the L left bumper and Y button, you will start flying. The final achievement will unlock, and that will be Spirit of the North absolutely complete. So not a... A very, very, very beautiful way to end the game, actually. Genuinely one of my, one of my most favourite um, sort of endings just for this part, anyway. Just because it looks so good. But anyway, there we go then, guys and gals. So thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the game and that the guide helped as well. If you did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Big shout out, as always, to my Patreon supporters and my YouTube members. Thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you in the next one, guys and gals. Big love!